We are now going live, and Instagram is telling my followers that I have a live video. So we will see. We have a lot of people with, oh, hola, Jose, Luis, how are you? Welcome. Miss Dana Joy, welcome. I'm Giddy, welcome. Dr. Russ Romano, welcome. That's a side joke in case any of you didn't know. That's my other account so that I can look on my iPad to see how my demonstration is displaying. Hey, Giddy, welcome. I'm fine. Will say, uh, I need to talk with you because I have some stamps to send you, and I just want to make sure that I am not duplicating anything that you have already, because I've noticed that you've started posting some of your some of your acquisitions. So, um, so Pocono Pam is here, posted by Kristen is here, welcome. Nan is here. Uh, so today we have a lot of things uh, to talk about, and I'm excited for a lot of reasons. Um, but uh, we are going to do some demos. Now, for those of you who are here, a lot of you know this stuff already. Uh, uh, so just bear with us and please add in comments uh, as you see fit. Uh, because I know that we have some very experienced uh, stampers and rubber stampers here. Uh, so, But one of the things that I am going to highlight today is I'm going to... Allison, welcome. Uh, Vicky is here. Welcome. Uh, we have people from all over the world here today. We have someone from Germany. We have someone from India. We have someone from Spain today. Uh, welcome to all of you. Um, so, how are you? I'm well. I'm well, Allison. I thought you were being uh, kidnapped by your family, so uh, I'm thinking you're just going to stay to say hello uh, and offer support, but thank you. Uh, we've had a, a hectic, I've had a hectic week uh, with the theater and with some legal issues that I'm having. Uh, with one of my employers, one of the companies I work for, uh, I have a non-compete agreement with, uh, and one of the clauses is that uh, they uh, have control over what I uh, share with uh, on uh, social media. And so they have invoked a clause uh, that uh, controls the uh, artistic output of, of what I share on social media. When we were negotiating the contract, we simply thought that that was I couldn't display any of the works that I was working for them uh, without their approval. Uh, so we're just getting clarification for that. And until we do, I have to lay low on the art throwdown and on the studio sessions. Uh, so, but it's all going to be okay. I don't want anyone to worry about. Uh, I'm not being kidnapped and you know taking into some area of uh, creative uh, dungeon. Uh, it's just uh, they're protecting the product and they're paying me good money uh, to work for them. And they just want to make sure that the product, Tania Nelson, welcome, that the product that I am sharing isn't a product that um, uh, Canadian nurse, welcome, um, uh, that the product that I'm sharing with you isn't product that they are paying for. Um, or that uh, I'm not sharing. Uh, I definitely want to run to Spain. Absolutely, Jose. Uh, so, so I don't want you to worry about it. it will be fixed. Uh, we're just getting some clarification upon what some of the uh, Catherine welcome, what some of the clauses uh, in the contract mean, so that everyone can play nice, and uh, so that everyone is not, uh, you know, running on eggshells. Uh, so that that's what's going on. Um, so. I do color theory for them, and I'm a color consultant for them, so uh, they took offense to some of the color theory uh, posts that I was sharing, uh, namely the Pantone uh, color challenge. Vinu, welcome. Uh, so we're, it's all going to be okay. It's just a matter of time before I can go to full strength uh, sharing with you. So uh, there's no need to concern, uh, to be concerned. So it's all going to be okay. So uh, that's the elephant out of the room, uh, but today we're going to do part two of rubber stamping, and I'm just going to do a quick review of what we talked about in one, 
And then I'm going to do some more rubber stamping. I'm going to highlight uh, some ways to uh, – and welcome to all the friends of Pam and Dana Joy uh, who are following along. I will be highlighting their new stamp set, United as One. Uh, I'll be showing you the stamp set, and I'll be showing you a couple of the images uh, and how to use them. So uh, so that's what we're going to do today. So welcome, welcome to anybody who's new. Uh, and so uh, thank you for joining and for all the all my regular friends out there welcome this way uh, as well so uh, let's get to it so what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn the camera around uh, and so you can see my workspace uh, you're gonna see my out my window and my curtain uh, for a little bit and then um, so uh, Jose yes it is uh, uh, you are able to watch part one you can watch all of my studio sessions uh, that have been posted with the exception of one they are in my IGTV channel. Uh, if you just go to my profile, click on the little TV with a little squiggle in it, uh, that's my IGT channel. Uh, in the middle left of that screen, you will see a pop-up screen that allows you to uh, choose which series that you want to watch. And if you look at the studio series, all of those videos will uh, show up uh, and you can watch all of those, uh, all those old episodes. So, uh, so let's get to stamping. So here is the promised window screen, and here is my workspace. So uh, let me. Okay, there we go. Uh, so this is the stamp set that I'm going to be highlighting today, amongst others. This is the United as One. Uh, this is a Hero Arts stamp set. It's a new stamp set. And I'm very happy to say that its creators are with us today. Uh, They're watching along uh, a friend of mine, uh, Pocono Pam, and Miss Dana Joy as well are both uh, following along. Welcome to both of you, and congratulations on a second run. The first set of this had been sold out by Hero Arts, so congratulations uh, for the foresight of Hero Arts to have Pocono Pam and Miss Dana Joy uh, uh, design this for them. So uh, this is the stamp set. I did get it in time. I was sweating it a little bit, uh, and it came in yesterday. Uh, it's an exquisite set, and it has a bunch of little pieces uh, that I enjoy because you can create so many different things with this uh, because they are in so many different little pieces. Uh, and so we're going to stamp with this a little bit later in the show. Uh, but this is one of the uh, things that I wanted to share with you. Uh, so, uh, congrats, once again, congratulations to all around. Uh, it is the month of August. Uh, they have their second stamp set uh, that is going to be released this month as well. Uh, if you go to both Pam and I think Dana's uh, sites, profiles, uh, I know Pam has shared a preview of it. Uh, so, uh, so, here we go. Uh, we'll get to this a little bit later. Uh, but today I want to talk to you about... Uh, stamping problems, and I also want to talk to you about embossing, which was the second question uh, that was asked. So let's do that now. Um, Korea Van has joined. Welcome. So these were the images that I stamped last week. Um, once again, I just want to show you. This is the dye ink. I'll give, show this up to you up close. Uh, so that's the dye ink. This is water-based. This is the pigment ink, the same image on the same paper. As you can see, if you look at the two of them, uh, one is a little bit darker. The pigment ink is a little bit darker than the dye ink. And Amanda's Crafts and Kits has joined. Welcome. And I will show you how you can get this a little bit darker as well when we talk about re-stamping the same image. Um, and then uh, this is the chalk ink. This is the Verse of Magic. This is also a pigment ink. Uh, but what I wanted to highlight today were the differences uh, in them in terms of what you can use with them. So this is the dye ink. You can use a Tombow, which is a water-based marker on it. Here is the 
Sharpie. Oh, there we go. And you can see that the Sharpie doesn't bleed. And I may get a, I can find one quickly. And I can't, because it's on a different table. That's fine. This is the Micron. And I'll show these up to you up close. Um, but this is the uh, Copic marker. And as you can see, you're going to get a little, possibly get a little bleed through when you use alcohol inks with these dye inks. So you can see the marker here, the Sharpie, the, um, uh, well, uh, the Micron, and then here is the Copics. So this is the Versify, and this is the pigment inks. We're going to do the same thing so that you can see the effects uh, on them, and I'll do them in the same order. So you can see here, uh, there is the Tombow water base, there is the Sharpie, there's the Micron, and you can see you're starting to get some of this feathering with the Copics. And then we'll do the same thing one more time. And then this is the chalk ink. So you can see that um, you get a little bit of streaking, but that's more of the marker, and that was me using it. Uh, the Sharpie is not, let me get my shadows out, the Sharpie is not feathering the cope. I mean, the, um, I always forget the name, the microns. But then you can see there's a little bit of the feathering here in the uh, Copics. And then just let me show you the difference between the two. So you can see the top one is the dye-based ink, which works much better with the Copics than here. Now this one is not so bad, but there is some, you can see some of the feathering of the ink here. Um, so that's the difference in using which ink for which uh, occasion. So that's what you want to do. Uh, just make sure that you use the right ink for what it is that you want to do. Uh, so those are the big differences. Those are the big three differences. Um, and I think what I'll do next is let me show you a stamping platform. You know what? Let's do. Let me do this instead. So let me demonstrate for you embossing. So Nan had asked me about embossing, and um, and I, you, you can use two things with embossing. You can use this uh, Versamark water stamp pad, which is a clear stamping ink. What I tend to do is I like to use uh, an ink that matches the embossing powder that I'm using. Uh, that way, if you don't get solid coverage uh, on your uh, embossing, the color will show through. Uh, and so it doesn't look like there's a gap. Now, what I normally do, and these are new embossing powders, is I normally will ink the top of this, put embossing powder on the top of the lid and heat that up so that I can look at the lid and know the exact color of the embossing powder that is in the container. For example, I bought this one because I thought it was a cranberry 
color to go with this VersaFine ink and uh, this is actually more of a pink so um, I missed the boat on this one but I do have some pinks that I think that will go with this so it might not be too bad but once I heat emboss this lid um, I will uh, make that determination of what I will use so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take one of my uh, Jose I have a whole bunch of ink pads so I probably have about 30 different colors uh, in ink pads and I have so many different styles um, uh, and then I have a whole collection of ink pads from Stamping Up which is this brand that uh, I used to demonstrate with and I don't even know if these have ink anymore <laughs> so I have probably 60 of these that I have I had one of every color because I was demoing them uh, demonstrating them so I probably have boxes of these in both the craft and the classics and uh, probably have reinkers for each of them uh, but I don't know if these are still even usable uh, but so I have a lot I guess is, is my is my quick answer uh, so let me clear my station here because for those <laughs> uh, for those of you that know anything about embossing inks you know it has the possibility of getting everywhere so uh, swap a cake welcome so a couple of things that I I have in my immediate area when I emboss I have a piece of cardstock that I have folded in half anything that can melt I have away from my station including my uh, cutting board uh, I cover this because we are actually going to be using heat uh, Kubla Constance welcome and you don't want to melt anything that you don't want melted uh, I have the ink pad that I'm going to use the matching embossing powder that I'm going to use uh, let me get my pens out of the way and then I have small I ha oh here's I have two small watercolor brushes um, and so uh, and I'll show you those in just a second if I'm using I have big bins of these uh, in white and in clear that I have in Tupperware containers uh, so I use those most often and so I have those in a container and I have a plastic spoon so when I use it my embossing powder in a container uh, I use a spoon so those are the materials that I have available readily available to use this and then I'm going to reach behind me and get out my embossing tool this is a heat tool uh, this is the one that I use uh, this is a short face uh, but uh, there are the long ones as well long pointed ones I uh, get the one that you feel comfortable with uh, this has one setting this is just an on and off switch uh, and the thing I like about this one is it doesn't have a lot of force some of those larger ones expel such uh, air that you can actually spread your embossing powders before it, they get heated so um, so that's where we are so that's what we have so I'm going to take one of these petals I'm going to use the gold um, and then I'm just going to ink up and I use like I said I use in, uh, pigment ink for this because it stays wet a little bit longer and it gives the plastic molecules in the embossing powders a place to stick so uh, that's why I use pigment uh, let me just be quick and then what I try to do is try to clean this off as much as possible because you definitely don't want ink going where you don't want it I well, listen, I'm not worried about this is just for demonstration purposes so I'm not worried about getting it square or anything like that I press down and there's my image and I got lucky uh, I had a pretty solid image there uh, it's a new stamp and a new ink uh, so sometimes you're not as lucky um, and then 
just a second. I'm going to turn my fan around so it's not blowing on my area because uh, it is 96 degrees outside uh, here in New York City today. And then what you do is you can just spread this liberally. Um, and the nice thing about embossing powders is that they go a long way. So I only use about a fifth of this. And once I shake this out, and then you can tap it from the back as well, like a lot of people do. And so there is your embossing powder. Then I take a soft brush and dispel any powder that I don't want. Okay. So normally I would, ju well, I'll just do this now. Um, then what you do is you take, you tap on the side, and then you just pour this back into your container. Keep this for another day. And Jots in the Mail joined. Welcome. And so, uh, yes, once again, you use a pigment ink to stamp your image. You stamp it. Then you dust it with embossing powder. You shake off the loose embossing powder. Then you wipe away any powder that you don't want because wherever there's powder on your card, it will get heat set. So you want to make sure that you don't. And then I'm going to hold this up to you because to me, this is one of the most magical things uh, in stamping. Now keep in mind, try to keep your fingers out of the way because this will get hot. Uh, you can use... There we go. Uh, I keep it a couple of inches away. And then... What happens is that this turns into liquid. And you can see at the star at the very top, it's so hot. It turns into liquid and then it changes before your eyes. And to me, this is, you know, this is crafting magic, honestly. And once it starts, you'll see it. And there you go. I know it's hard to see in this light. There, there it is. There's the shimmer. So it turns from powder. It turns liquidy. Uh, and then it turns shiny. See, there you go. That's it. Okay, so did everyone catch all that? Um, so that, Nan, is heat embossing. So um, that is... Uh, the process um, and then uh, let me oh I don't have it out maybe I can find it so um, so and then if you don't want this shine which I don't know why you wouldn't uh, what you can do is especially if you, like in terms of words or things that you're working on uh, like embellishments uh, what you can do is you can take a matte finish Mod Podge and then just put a slight layer over it uh, and uh, it will give it a matte finish rather than this glossy shiny finish. So that is heat embossing. So um, now the other thing that you can do is you can also heat from the back. Now it takes a little bit longer just to set it and then you can heat it from the front. Um, Craft and Ways joined. Welcome. So I'm fixing my fan again. That's why I'm reaching by. So that is heat embossing. So uh, that is that lesson. So now let me 
do a couple of troubleshooting things. And one of, I am a big fan. I didn't start off in, in rubber stamping to first start off with. I started off in card making. Um, and so let me put my craft mat back down. So I came later to rubber crafting, uh, to rubber stamping, and I had a lot to learn. And when I, uh, you can order, uh, Jose, uh, you can order this any at anywhere, anywhere that sells stamping materials like ink pads. Uh, they will have embossing powders. Uh, you can get them on Amazon as well. Um, all the brands are, you know, a lot of the stamping supplies I say are a lot of. Uh, like a box, a box is a cereal. Uh, they're all the same on the inside. It's just the outsides are different. So, uh, so most of the embossing powders are going to be the same. So find one that in your area, a uh, lot of the same. Yes, there are differences in ink pads, but the same thing. Find one that's available to you and easy for you to get, uh, and then experiment with what you have. Um, so, but uh, so anywhere that you can buy uh, rubber stamping supplies. You can usually get the uh, embossing powders. Uh, once again, I use pigment ink. Uh, I just find that it works better. Uh, but you can also use a watermark, like a Versamark type of uh, clear ink as well. Uh, the thing I have difficulty with clear with clear inks is it's hard to see on the page, so you actually have to tilt the page to see where the image is, and to see if you have coverage on the image. Uh, but um, that's why I tend to also use a, um, a pigment ink. Uh, and I match the pigment ink to the embossing powder. And this is that image once again. Uh, so you can see the shimmer there. Uh, EK Filer is here. Welcome. So that is embossing. Um, one of the things I did want to share with you today is... If you're not a good rubber stamper, uh, find a uh, – uh, Jose, the difficulty with using a hairdryer, it doesn't generate enough heat – excuse me, wow, my voice has changed there uh, – enough heat to melt the, pl uh, the plastic in the powder. So uh, you do need a, uh, a heat embossing tool of some sort. Okay, So this is the – Stamping platform that I use, it's the one that I learned with. Uh, this is a Misty. Uh, this is the largest size. It comes in three sizes. It comes in the mini. It comes in the regular size. And because I was doing a lot of uh, 12 by 12 pages, uh, I got the larger one uh, because I could stamp in a 12 by 12 page, a scrapbook page. And so this is the one. Uh, that that I learned with, and um, and I like these for a lot of reasons um, because you end up wasting less materials with this. And so what this is, it is a hinged platform. And oh no, I'm not gonna fit. Okay, maybe I will. Will I fit? No, I won't. Okay. So, uh, and what this is, is I, what I, a couple of hacks here. So the first is they come with this paper grid. And what I do is I double side tape it to the foam. Now you get two levels of foam here. Uh, the first one, use the first, use two of them. If you're using acrylic stamps, you use one of them. If you are using rubber stamps. And so uh, that's the first thing. And then the other hack is that I tape them into place because the foam mats are smaller than the opening. And what I found is that when I was actually stamping, I was actually moving it so I couldn't stamp the same place each time. So, uh, so that's why I put them into place. Uh, they also come with... Let me see if I can find Here we go. Uh, with these magnets that you can use. Okay. And another hack is um, 
So Allison, a, a MISTI is simply, is simply a stamping platform. It's an easy way to repeatedly stamp something uh, and get a clear image every single time that you use it. Um, so that's it. They're called stamping platforms. Um, so another hack that I do is I take decorative paper and use double-sided tape and tape these uh, with a little bit of an overhang so that when I use them, I can pick them up easily off, off the platform. So uh, that is another hack that I use. So let me show you one. So, and let me show you this as well because I'm going to be using this. These are also corner guides. And so what I normally do is I normally stamp here in the corner uh, because I can get square, I can get a card square in the corner like so. And I know that will be square every time. Uh, but you can also use these mats. There we go. I think that's where I'm going to have to keep this. So, um, so I'll. So what I'm going to do is um, you can also use these. Let's see. To do the same thing. And then this way you can, they're not sticking very well today. So what you can do is you can line up your page there, take one of your magnets and put it there. And then this will still close so that you can stamp. Um, there are a couple of people saying that they are using duct tape for their magnets as well. And so the beautiful thing about this is, Allison, I'm glad that you are here, is because what I like about the MISTI is that you can actually lay out your design directly on the card that you're going to use. And then what you do is you close the lid, press down to get contact, and then your stamp will be in place in that place every time that uh, you need to use it. Now, I'm going to move this again just so that you can see. And I'll just do this once. Uh, and what I'm going to do is um, let's use some of this versifying. Okay. And then you just ink this. And then what I'm going to do is I'm purposely, purposefully going to miss some of the stamp. Okay. And then because I've made a mess, I'm going to get up because you don't want ink where you don't want ink. Hello, Janet. Welcome. So, I'm just going to do this once, right? And then what you're going to do is you're going to close this and then you're just going to press down. Okay. Now, the thing I like about this particular, uh, this particular uh, platform is that, and with any platforms, it allows you, now I didn't get perfect coverage with this uh, on purpose. And so now what I can do is I can go back and stamp, re-ink my stamp in the same place where it was. And if I haven't moved anything, this will stamp exactly the same pace. I know it's not a true skull because he has all his teeth. You're absolutely right. Uh, but I was doing this for Allison. And then you can get a perfect re-stamped image without getting all that fuzziness that you can get when you try to re-stamp on your own. So Ashley, this and Nan, this was this is the solution to uh, 
those of you that are having problems with getting a clear stamped image uh, each time, uh, use a stamping platform and it will save save your lives. <laughs> I know that's an overstatement, but it will save you a lot of frustrations uh, and a lot of uh, materials because you're going to get it right the first time as opposed to having throwaway cards that you don't you can't use because you didn't get a perfect image. So that is my solution and look how beautifully this has dried. I mean that is Allison is our uh, our uh, studio uh, Halloween person so I I did this image for her but I also want to show you how to ink a large image and not be afraid because many times you, you don't get that coverage on a large stamp and so um, uh, I, it really is a um, uh, so you're absolutely right. Uh, uh, there are, like I said, there were three sizes. Uh, there is this large one, and I only got the large. And I, and I've always done this, and I don't know why, uh, but I've always gotten the largest size available because I always thought that I would be able to use it in a variety of different ways. If you got the larger size, and then just minimize it if you had the space, but definitely. Uh, there is a medium size one, uh, which I think is six inches. Someone can clarify me. It's either eight and a half inches wide or six inches wide. And then there's the mini. Uh, so if you don't have a lot of space and you're not only going to be making card bases or card fronts, you should be able to get by with a mini, I would think. Uh, but uh, work with what you can get and what you feel comfortable with. Um, and so this really is a life saver as far as I am concerned. I keep this underneath my station uh, where I keep my um, paper cutters uh, so that I can always have it at hand and uh, you can always have it. And the nice thing is if you're making multiples, um, you can just stick a card into the corner. Um, you can just stick a card, card base here in the corner each time. And that's what I'm going to do with, let me clean this off real quick, and I'll show you um, how, just how easy this makes if you're making sets, right? Um, and so let me just wipe this guy off a little bit. And once again, I'm just using baby wipes. Uh, and I, one time I bought stock in baby wipes uh, and... I had cases of them, and I'm finally starting to get to run out of them. Uh, but some of them are running out of their little moisture. But um, but then that gives us great a great opportunity. So what I am going to do is I'm going to work in this bottom corner. Um, let me see if I can make sure that I can clear. I can. So I'm going to work in this bottom corner. And then the thing I like about this as well is that you can create directly on your card and um, figure out where things go before you stamp, uh, which you can't always do. Uh, one of the beautiful things about this stamp set uh, is that, and this is the United is One stamp set, um, is that there are a whole bunch of individual pieces that you can you can uh, customize to the way that you want. Um, Canadian nurse, if you could do me a favor, could you just let us know the quick dimensions of the mini and the medium, if you could, or anyone that has them, uh, that would be great. Hey, Nick, welcome. And so there is this beautiful heart that's an open heart that you can use in a variety of different ways. You could put any of the sentiments uh, that you want. And then what, so you can actually create right on your card. And because I'm doing this live, I'm not going to worry about 
even this because I just want to demonstrate this for you. And then you can even get multiple passes I almost put one in backwards, so just pay attention to what you're doing. And then if you have these little bitty dewdrop ink pads, So there we are. Okay, and this is just a, a beautiful little sentiment in what I will do. And once again, I'm creating on the fly here. Um, a little nervous creating in front of the designers themselves, but you know, hey, it's this is a place of love, and that's what this whole stamp set is about. So um, it, it really is all about the love of each other. So I have all my elements here, and the beautiful thing about one of these little petal point pads is that you can, whoops, it might be better if I actually <laughs> stamp the right side. So I'm going to press down, make sure these all adhere to the lid. And once again, what I'm going to do is I'm going to move this out so that you can actually see me stamping these up. That's the only regret that I have about this it makes about the large size Misty is that it makes it a little difficult to demo. Oops, sorry. Okay, so I'm going to put the card back in the corner. I'm going to take one of my magnets and keep it in place. And then what I'm going to do is actually, if I can get it in camera, there we go. I am going to stamp. And then, whoops, let me get this back into, into frame. And then what I will do is I will take a different color. see no there's a laugh <laughs> okay so I'm gonna get this back into screen this is where we are going to stamp let me get off any excess sink now the beauty of this stamping platform is that even if you get ink on the lid it shouldn't adhere because the stamp should prevent it from okay and okay so this is the perfect example of being able to
What I'm doing is I'm re-inking because I didn't get a good impression the first time. And the pink hearts. Okay. And let's see this time. There we go. Okay. Now I would be much care more careful, but this is the gist of the idea. So the first time it didn't come through, I still could have inked, still can go back through and get a, bit, a little bit better on this heart. But the idea is that you can very easily customize this particular stamp set. And because you're working in a platform, stamping platform, you can correct any of the problems that you have. So that's the beauty of this particular stamp set. Let me show it to you again, is that it is so customizable that you can use it for so many different purposes. Uh, you can use this heart alone for so in so many different ways. So um, I can't recommend and just the sentiments, just what just for people to know that their love supported the necessary they respected they appreciate could be any sentiment for any occasion. Uh, and then we could talk about any of the other sentiments of acceptance and helping each other out. Uh, unity creates peace. How can I help you? I am not okay. Um, united as one, I stand with you. You are not alone in this. Uh, that'd be a great sentiment to use for uh, sympathy cards. So there are any numbers. An open mind does wonders for heart and soul. When you win, I win. When you lose, I lose. Uh, when you hurt, I hurt. Once again, so many different ways in which you can do this, um, use this, and I just cannot explain, uh, I, I, you know, explain how much I love this particular set. Uh, I was, I was teasing Pam that I was uh, at 8:01 after it was released. I was online because I had started work at five o'clock in the morning that morning. And I was on my phone. I had set my own alarm on my on my phone to make sure that I was available at eight o'clock to order mine. And so, uh, and I'm glad I did because they sold out th that day. So um, I cannot recommend this more highly. So, um, and then once again, if you want, um, you can then either make it even more special with using embossing powders, uh, if you want. Um, uh, you can like emboss these uh, these words here. Uh, so there are any number of ways in which you can do this. And one of the things you could do as well is that you could emboss the first part and then come back with the outer heart uh, and do that in ink so that you don't get embossing powders where you don't want it. Uh, so that is another way that you can use embossing powders to actually uh, do that. And I think that's what uh, I have a couple minutes remaining. So I think that's what I, I'm going to do now is I'm going to put this here. I'm going to put this in. See if I can do this. No, let's put this back down here. Let's take these off. It's times like this I wish I had fingernails, but that's all right. We'll get through this. And then let me – okay, so what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to take my red ink again and re-ink that sentiment. And then I am going to place my card just for demo's sake. 
get this out of the way. And then what I'm going to do is you can see I didn't get the D, but this is like I said, this is just for demo sake. And I didn't put my magnet down. And then what you can do is let's take our well, I was hoping. I don't know what I did with it. Oh, here it is. I already had it up. Let's take Courtney the lawyers joined. Welcome. Let's just take this like that. Okay, and then I'm going to take my brush because I have a little bit here that I don't want. And there are also, for those of you who are into who are into embossing, you know that there are these static pads that you can purchase that uh, you can run over your your project before you put the, it's an anti-static pad. Uh, so it's like a, a talc powder that you can then uh, prevent loose strands. Like you can see the little loose strands I have here, but I'm just going to fold this up for now. And then what I'm going to do is try to heat emboss this in the few minutes I have left. And what's going to, I would be much more careful with this than I have been. Hey, Carrie, welcome. And you can see that it is, it's hard to see you in this red, but um, you can see that it is glossy. And then what you do is you would go back in and then you would stamp the heart in place. So I would have measured that out much better, but that's the idea. So you can... You use these stamps any number of ways, but here you can heat emboss the interior of the sentiment, then stamp the image that you don't want to emboss later on. And this is how you can do it in a two-stage two process to get uh, what you want. So that is that. Uh, let's see. Are there any questions? Um, yeah, there are any number of things that you can use, Pam. Uh, I have sciz uh, not scissors. I have tweezers that I use as well. You can hold a paper or a clothespin, as you say, or even a bulldog clip. Uh, there are any number of ways that you can uh, hold those things uh, to keep your hands from uh, from getting uh, hot. But uh, once again, and this was the. Uh, United as one stamp set. I have it all over the place, so I can't show it to you at the moment. But uh, so, but done by Hero Arts. You can check them out. Um, let's see if I think I just stamped on top of it, Pam. But yeah. So um, here is the front, and then here we have our lovely designers here. Sorry, I stamped over your faces. Uh, but here we have uh, Miss Dana Joy, uh, and then here we have our Pocono, our own Pocono Pam. So, um, and then you can share your projects uh, here, and 100% um, made. Uh, Hero Arts is a family-run, green-certified, community-focused American small manufacturer. So, um, and then. Here is 100% of the profits uh, from the set will go to racial justice charities. So you're not only getting great stamping materials, but you're supporting some great designers, a great American company 
but more importantly, racial justice charities. So uh, this is an easy way uh, you can do um, uh, do your part. So um, and, uh, so yeah, it's just um, I just want to thank everyone for following along. Uh, thank everyone that is new to the channel. Uh, thank everyone that has been supporting so far. And uh, but thank you both uh, to the queens of crafts that we have here, uh, Miss Dana Joy and Miss Pocono Pam. Um, and once again, thanks to the Hero Arts uh, Company uh, for taking these two people uh, out of local celebrity hood and placing them on the world stage and on the U.S. stage because uh, uh, I can't think of, and I, I mainly speaking of Pam, I don't know uh, Dana as well, but um, I can't think of two nicer people that could uh, deserve the acc accolades that they're getting. So, uh, so thank you uh, once again, and uh, Jose, I'll be sending you a, a DM here really soon, as soon as I get off, and have a great week, have a wonderful day. Uh, do what you do, do it with love, and, uh, and we're on our own, and each of us together will make this a much better world. So thanks, everyone. Have a great night. Have a great day. And I am wearing my ATD bracelet. Yes. So have a great rest of the day, and I will see you when I see you. I don't know when, quite when that will be, but it will be sooner rather than later. So have a great day. Bye-bye, and thanks for joining in.